some guy, some police were chasing some guy, went into an apartment complex, and while they were chasing him, one of them stopped and said, oh, I hear something that sounds odd in here. So they just kick the door in and go in there. Well, the Supreme Court said, well, you know, he thought something might be going on. They didn't find any drugs. They didn't find anything. But they gave them the right, which I mean, we can all argue about whether they have the right to or not. They can say that we have to, like the Indiana Supreme Court said, that we have to allow the police to come in and our uh, recourse is to wait after they kill us or our family or whatever, then go to court and try to reason yeah. with the court. Who who do the police work for? Nobody's, nobody's uh, yeah, but no one in their right mind is going to do that. I mean, I uh, under the same circumstances, I think I'd be laying on the ground with 60 bullet holes in me. I mean, a- any man's going to grab his rifle mm-hmm. to protect his family. I'd say that it's your duty to stop the It is your duty. The it is your, and, and you know what I don't like about the court decisions is they actually have reversed their own precedent. There was case pr- law precedent and Supreme Court decision precedent, precedent rather, um, in past years where police operating under the color of law but outside the letter of law that were killed in the line of duty those people that did that were not charged with murder because the police officers were acting outside their bounds I think that was so, uh, Bad Elk or Bad Little Bear or something like that where they chased somebody onto a reservation yep. or somebody and that's one of the cases I'm talking about yep. and so for them it, it, it seems like in the United States right now there is no law it's whatever some judge decides you, you know, on a particular day. Thank you. And so how do we, even if we wanted to be a law-abiding citizen, how could we possibly do so when the bullseye keeps moving? We hand over supreme power to the president. That's how we do it. <laughs> which we did, which the Congress did this week. Well, I'd rather hand over power to Sam Holt, <laughs> but that's all I got to say. So. Hey, thank you. Anyway, thanks for addressing the issue, General. Thanks a lot. Thank you for the call. By the way, I would encourage anybody who wants to to Google uh, General Smedley Butler. I, I, can I read a quote from him real quick? Yeah. Uh, I'm looking here. This is an excerpt, an excerpt from a speech he gave in 1933. I helped make Mexico, especially Tampico, safe for American oil interests in 1914. I helped make Haiti and Cuba a decent place. Haiti and Cuba a decent place for the National City Bank boys to collect revenues. I helped in the raping of a half a dozen Central American republics for the benefits of Wall Street. The record of racketeering is long. I believe in adequate defense of the coastline and nothing else. If a nation comes over here to fight, then we'll fight. Trouble is with America is that when the dollar only earns 60% over here. Then it gets restless and goes overseas to get 100%. Then the flag follows the dollar, and the soldiers follow the flag. Hmm. You know, with the, this whole thing with the Fourth Amendment, we have to really ask ourselves, just because some guy in a black robe says that, well, we're just going to do away with this, and we're going to just water this down to where it doesn't really mean anything anymore, does that really become law? Is it really true? I mean, was the Fourth Amendment made... For us, or was it put there to restrict the government? Patrick Henry, in the ad that we play every stinking mm-hmm. day on the show, is he says the Constitution is not an instrument to restrain, for, to the, restrain people. the people; it is the instrument of the people to restrain the government, lest it come to dominate our lives and interests. Just because the government says, "Well, we don't believe in this anymore," it doesn't matter. We, the individual, have the individual right and liberty to defend ourselves and defend our home. Where does that right come from? God. It doesn't come from the Constitution? No, it does not. It doesn't come from a black robed judge? It does not. It doesn't come from a guy with a gun? It does not. It comes from God. Basically, we have a rule of force, not a rule of law. Do we? Four, five, eight, talk. The big horn head. You want to play the big horn head? We're going to play the big horn head. All How right. about it? No, it's, now i got to look it up here. Hang on a second. We'll take a f- call. All right. Four, five, eight, talk is the number. Good morning. You are on Patriot's Lament. Uh, yes. Uh, can I bring this to the city level, this freedom? Oh, please. come on. Please. No, please do. I mean, because at, at every level. We're talking about government at every level here, aren't we? Yeah, and we think that uh, the local level is the most important one, because I don't really see us doing a whole lot at the national level, but if we can have a little bit of sanity right here, we can survive a little longer? Yeah. Go ahead. Well, um, I'm, I'm calling in regard to the issue of the fluoride that we have in our water. And I was here in the uh, late 1960s when they first uh, ruled on that, and that was the city councils, that members that uh, decided on their own authority, they gave themselves their authority, 
to rule that they could medicate us. And uh, no doctor should they be able to come into um, the city council and bombard the people with uh, saying that, uh, I think you all should take such and such a medicine, uh, you know, because of such and such a thing. Yeah. But um, this is what's happening with fluoride. No, I'm, I'm very thankful. The city council just introduced an ordinance that is going to uh, reverse that. Well, they I don't know that it's completed yet, but I went to the task force hearings. I went to about four of them, and every one of them, this is what I emphasized, mm-hmm. that besides the fact that fluoride is in question, a neuro, neurotoxin, um, that Nobody has the authority yeah. to do that. They took it upon themselves. Yeah, you know, they do is have act- the authority because we give it to them. They have the power. I don't think they have the authority. I mean, there is a difference between power and authority. Well, and power. The that, rule yes. of force. Exactly. And and you know what? Thank you very much, ma'am, for bringing that up because I don't, I think you're right. The 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 ordinance has been introduced by the mayor, and it is before the city council right now. I'm not sure it has actually been passed. So we need we need to support them in that. Yeah. To they make sure get rid to, of it. because right now, as long as they have that power to medicate us against our will with fluoride then they could take it upon themselves to medicate us with uh, fluoramine. You know that fluoride is a pacifier. Yeah. It pacifies a person over time. It pacifies them. Yes, the Nazis put it in the water in some of the villages to um, keep people docile. Yep. And, uh, I can't and imagine they've been doing that for years that. here. Oh, in they our would ne- that would never happen here. <laughs> that, thank you so much for the phone call. I appreciate thank it. You. All right, I have the uh, the Bighorn ad ready to play for you now. Take a listen to this. It will be found an unjust and unwise jealousy to deprive a man of his natural liberty upon the supposition he may abuse it. George Washington. They who would give up an essential liberty for temporary security deserve neither liberty or security. Benjamin Franklin. The Constitution is not an instrument for the government to restrain the people. It is an instrument for the people to restrain the government, lest it come to dominate our lives and interests. Patrick Henry. America will never be destroyed from the outside. If we falter and lose our freedoms, it will be because we destroyed ourselves, Abraham Lincoln. I predict future happiness for Americans if they can prevent the government from wasting the labors of the people under the pretense of taking care of them. Thomas Jefferson. Property is surely a right of mankind as real as liberty. John Adams. The Constitution is a guide which I never will abandon. George Washington. Brought to you by Bighorn Enterprises, who would like to remind us all what a... Oh, sorry about that, Josh. I went to... uh, Cool kids. Yeah, those are are your own children. Yeah. uh, Exploiting the young to to bring us the... uh... You know, every one of those quotes has a direct correlation with what's happening today. Private property... The Constitution, destroying ourselves from the inside, the enemy within our borders. All right, we got about five minutes left. Four five eight talk is the number we got on the next call. Good morning. Who's this? Hey, this is Roger. Roger, what's on your mind? Well, um, I was thinking about um, um, well, uh, I got a little story. My my mom one time was out of a car. She didn't have a car to drive, so. I went down and bought a cheap car, and I worked for a week, and I fixed it. And, I mean, a lot of hard work for me, and um, it broke again a while later, and my mom took it down to the scrapyard and scrapped it, and it was a real insult to me, you know, to all my hard work. And and uh, I think that's exactly what people are doing when they don't they don't enforce their own rights. They don't take it upon themselves to have their own rights, they're spitting in the faces of all the people who have fought and died for those rights. When you don't defend your own rights, you're insulting those people. You know, everybody who says they that they uh, love the military and all these things, that's what you got to do to really prove that you love the military and that you believe in the military is that you have to defend your own right hey, when Roger. it comes down to a personal basis. Roger, take it a step farther. you got to defend the rights of others. Because take a look, for instance, at this wood-burning issue. How many people do you know that do not burn wood that are not getting involved in this issue because it doesn't affect them? A lot of people. I mean, I have very few friends that really 
uh, that really stand up with me when I when I get I get pretty heated about it, and um, and they're like, oh, it's not a big deal. And I'm like, well, it's not for you, but I'm going to take it upon myself to to you know to take this issue up. And, and you, we have to stand up for the rights of others, or else the, our own rights don't mean anything, do they? That's right. Um, I mean, everybody's got the right to do what they want to do, and um, I don't think it's any other man's um, business to say whether I, how I heat my home. One of my favorite quotes from from Aaron is that we are not gods; we're men. We don't make we don't tell other people how to do you know how to live their lives we're not gods we're all equal we're men and i mean that i really uh i really believe in that well until people can stand up for the guy beside them which is the defining difference in our revolution to all other revolutions until we're fighting for everybody's freedom and not for our own personal issue there will be no freedom and i don't mean like fighting with firearms and stuff like that i mean until this whole town tells the borough to get bent over the wood issue, we're never going to see the light of day. No, we can't even stand up to him with that. I think uh, Thomas Paine had a good quote from what you're saying right now, Roger. He said, those who expect to reap the blessings of freedom must, like men, undergo the fatigue of supporting it. That's all of us. That's not just the military. That's not just our folks down that are in government. That's every single person. Has exactly to support my their point. own liberty. But if you guys stand up for liberty, then the Taliban will come here and kill all of us. Well, who needs the Taliban when we got um, when we got a, a police officer? The Obama ban. I'm not. I'm not talking about the. You know, I'm not down on police at all. But you know, if I if I buy my land out in Catalina and then they decide to expand the borough and make me pay property taxes. Suppose I don't. Suppose I don't want to pay property taxes because that's why I bought the land out there. So I stay there. I don't pay my property taxes. I lose my land. They come to take me out of there, and I decide I bought this land. This is my land. Come take it, and I'm gonna. I, I'm gonna defend it. They will kill me, or they will put me in prison. They'll store me away in a goof house because I didn't go away. Go along with their. Uh, their. Uh, yeah what they say that I should do. And I'm defending my own rights. I lose. So who needs the Taliban? Brother, thanks for the call. Gentlemen, we are out of time. We will see you next week. Don't touch that dial. Fairbanks is listening. 660 AM. KFAR. Fairbanks.